Mike's Daily Podcast. F is owed 891. Hello, it is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley today. It is the return of the Much Love feature into an interview where I'll be speaking with the extremely talented Nashville-based singer-songwriter K.S. Rhodes. We'll hear two songs from him. Plus, we'll hear from Benita. Mike's Daily Podcast. The disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. He's so Nita. Mike's Daily Podcast. When I was young, someone gave me this bit of advice when you're looking for that woman that you want to call your bride your wife this rule of thumb generally applies that they will look like their mom later on in their lives well that's certainly true with me i see my dad in my mirror mike's daily podcast and the things that used to bother me or bother him are now becoming clear Mike's like politicians and horrible television podcasts. and vapid popular culture yeah. that kind of stuff and Antonin Scalia what the H is going on with that guy he just hates gays look who just walked in hi Mike it's Benita the Rodeo Queen how y'all doing and it's a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what what it doesn't mean he hates gays. He just believes in the sanctity of marriage. And he doesn't want religious people to be persecuted. How is gay people getting married? See, I don't understand that logic. I, I Like I say, I work part-time at an AM station that's a, a all-Christian talk. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, what root beer did you make today? I made a, a rainbow a root beer. Oh, boy. Wow, that's amazing. That's perfect. Uh, just in time for all the pride parades going on. And because of the, uh, the the ruling of the Supreme Court, I am amazed by that root beer, but I am not going to drink it because I don't know what you used to make the different colors. You're very wise, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, so that's just a uh, disgruntled fiddle player. I mean... What What is it? Why do you not want gays to get married? Because it's like not natural. What? What? So what is natural? That really scary looking mustache on your face? Well, yeah, it grew out of my face. Yeah, but unless you had a razor to shave off the sides and the beard, you would not have a mustache. Well, wait a minute. Let me think about that for a little bit. No, you're wrong. Okay. I won't even get into the debate with the Confederate flag issue with you or Obamacare being uh, validated. Yeah, all that went on last week and I'm really tired. I think I need to sleep. I'm just going to take my hat and put it over my head and face and sleep for a little bit now. Okay. Mark, he's real tired. It's hard to be a conservative today. It's tough to be a gangster. Yeah, right. Same thing. Not really. But yeah, so the people are cheering. They're happy that finally this thing is going. You know, people are going to be uncomfortable about it. That's fine. I uh, was on Sunday hanging out with a friend of mine who is very conservative. She actually was quoted uh, by a local newspaper. They asked her what she thought about it. And she said, I don't agree with uh, their beliefs or their persuasion. She said this. And then she said, but I am okay with what I, I don't feel like I should butt into their politics. I don't, I shouldn't, you know, be controlling their way of life or what they can or can't do. Freedom. Something about that is in our constitution, isn't it? Even though the, the dissenters, the judges were all in their individual opinions. Because the dissenters all wrote individual opinions, separate opinions. The ones that agreed and uh, caused this thing to pass, they did one. And I don't know anything else about the Supreme Court, how it all works, but I heard that it's unusual when they're all writing it together, the opinion. And the dissenters all kind of disagreed between the dissenting, and they were all sort of like different different pieces of what they disagreed with. 
we're all and I think that kind of is what America is the people that disagree with gay marriage we all have different reasons for it or they all have different reasons for it I'm fine with it there's no I see no reason this should have been okayed a long time ago other countries civilized countries England for example have okayed this long ago although England did castrate Alan Turing for being gay but that was long ago hopefully we've uh, progressed since then here's the thing I'm going to fall off the soapbox any minute because I have horrible balance. But I just want to say that I will not be, uh, I, I'm not going to really go on any further than that. Except I love the Pet Shop Boys. And if they wanted to get married, I'm fine with that. Mark, I don't think they were actually a couple. They were just two guys that happened to be gay. How do you know that stuff? Well, you know, It's a Sin is one of the greatest songs of all time. I know! It's a, it's a sin. Great stuff. And why, what have I done to deserve this? Since you've been away, I've been hanging around. I've been wondering why. I forget the rest. Me too. Mike, I think Pet Shop Boys are great too. And I don't want to get way in on this topic at all. Because I'm busy. I got to do things like make a rainbow flag. Because they're pretty. And everyone's got one now. Bye, oh, bye. I love flags. What did she say? Oh, flags. Okay. That's good. That's good. We're progressing as a society. Like I was saying, I work at this uh, conservative Christian radio station, AM station. I'm sort of behind the scenes producer guy. And I, you know, I'm listening to the shows and right after the ruling on Friday morning, there's this one show. Most of the shows aren't that political. They have this one show that comes on. And they immediately are like, oh, our religious liberty is under attack. And I'm like, okay, start the scare tactics now. What the heck? You're trying to scare everyone into, uh, uh, you know, being against this. And I guess that's why they get the ratings. Because they have like-minded people that listen to that show that are like, okay, I want to be scared. I want to listen to this show. But how is religious liberties being attacked? You can, you don't have to, like they said, the churches, if they don't want to marry a gay couple, they don't have to. It's not like they're being forced to. It's now that gays can legally be married. The government agencies, they have to do this. They have to, they are forced now to marry gays and you know what that's what they have to do what the what the supreme court says the supreme court you may remember forced us to have george w bush as our president they have done some things that not everyone agreed with on both sides of the political spectrum so but i just don't like the immediate fear mongering that the right had to start doing it wasn't from a place of okay this is interesting this is a piece of history now uh, this is momentous. Uh, whether I agree with it or not, it's just, it. that's what it is now. No, it was immediately, you jump to the fear, you jump to the collapse of society, and all of that, which is ridiculous, and it completely uh, insults a huge portion of our society. It is an insult. And there are plenty of gays that are Christians. It is not one or the other. And the, the uh, country that we live in is a huge tapestry of different types, different uh, race, creeds, s- persuasions. And it's, it's all about freedom. It's what this country was founded on, was freedom. Freedom to uh, pursue a particular type of religion, whether it be uh, Mormons or uh, pilgrims or what have you. It was that kind of freedom, and that is in our Constitution. So I don't know what, was it Antonin Scalia that, Scalia that said that thing about the Constitution that this is not... Well, Roberts said that, right? Whatever. Go watch the Stephen Colbert thing that's online that's gone all viral uh, in preparation for his taking over the Late Show. He did a thing about that. It was really funny. You can tell me what you think. We read your comments on the section emails from email and your common not so comments. There, email me Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com, or you can comment there on the Twitter is at Mike Talks. 
or on facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. There's also the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, with links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. Rate and comment on the show there in iTunes, and uh, more people will find out about us, and we won't languish in obscurity as much as we do now. There's also links to where to find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, Ameristream Live, and I do a morning show weekdays on the Connecticut radio station Wolverine Radio, and there's a link to that there at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as a link to the country station that you can find me on weekends. Hey, we're also on Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. Links to all those at mikesdailypodcast.com. And finally, if you want to help out the show, there is the Amazon link. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through that first at mikesdailypodcast.com, and that helps us out uh, when you buy something. And it doesn't change the way that you shop. Hey, if you also want to donate money through the PayPal and become a Mike's Daily Podcaster, you'll get a personalized MP3 for thee from all the Cafe Anyway characters. You can find that too at mikesdailypodcast.com. As well as the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews. And speaking of interviews, it's KS Rhodes. Into an interview. KS Rhodes, it's Mike Matthews from Mike's Daily Podcast. Oh, hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. How are you? Do you have time to chat there? Are you in Chicago? Yeah, I'm in Chicago. Yeah, I've got a little bit of time. What's going on? Hey, uh, shall we chat about your album, Wilderness? Uh, sure, if you want. Yeah. I, that would be awesome. I really okay. I really enjoy your music. I heard Harvest, and I, I was like, oh, I got to try and talk to him. And Awesome, yeah. Uh, what got you into making music, KS Rhodes? Um, I guess I, you know, I have a grandmother who was a composer and a, and a and a pretty prodigious piano player from the time she was a little girl until she was, you know, 88 or whatever. So maybe it's like in the blood or something like that. But it just happened. And you also work with uh, symphonies, like the Nashville Symphony. Didn't you do some arranging for them? Yeah, I do. I do a lot of string arranging, and you know, if you've heard the record, you know there's a lot of uh, strings and stuff like that. So it sort of just all came together um, a couple years ago um, that I played with the Nashville Symphony. So um, yeah, it kind of you know, and I do string arrangements for other artists as well, and um, so on and so forth. So it sort of just made sense. And there, yeah, there is strings like on the song "Harvest," and I love the drums and the groove, and yeah, it sounds great. Shall we play it? <laughs> sure, sounds good. Let's play it on Mike Steely podcast. We're talking to KS Rhodes and the album "Wilderness," and they can find out more about you at ksroads.com. Uh, sure, yeah, that sounds good. That's a good place. Okay, it's "Harvest" on Mike Steely podcast.
I'm speaking with K.S. Rhodes, and he has this great album called Wilderness. Tell me about making the album Wilderness. Um, well, I uh, it'd been about it'd been a few years since my first record, and um, there I got together with this producer in town um, who'd worked with some people I really like, named Case and Cooley, and um, I think it sort of was just a culmination of uh, where I was at at the time. Um, you know, a bunch of ideas. It's a little heady, I guess, in some parts, but uh, it sort of all just uh, came together. And um, I don't know. It's been a while now, so it's it's time for another record, actually. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I had read somewhere that you have like you have like over a hundred songs, and you you want to get some other stuff out <laughs> soon. That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely do. I basically since uh, since since the wilderness um i've just done a lot of writing uh with other people i never really wrote with anyone else um until recently and uh i think like my albums generally are going to be songs I, I i tend to write by myself um but i've written for a lot of other things um you know like for commercials and film and television and stuff the past couple of years sort of just um diving into that world a little bit but um yeah so it's been really cool and you got a song on the Nashville, the TV show Nashville, right? The 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 season finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I've been doing a lot. That's that's what I mean, like doing things like that. Um, yeah, they were looking for. Uh, they were looking. Actually, they were looking for a song for. They were sort of looking for a real upbeat um, country song, and that's not really my my forte. And I had my friend Kay York over, who uh, she's written a, a lot of songs on the show. I think she's had like sixteen songs on the show so far. And um, and we were uh, just sort of trying to write that song, and it wasn't working. And I sort of looked over at her, and I was like, "Hey, you know why this isn't working? Because it's not, you know, it's not the, the style of music that that we generally, you know, dive into." And um, so I just started playing these real chill chords on the piano, and I basically played the melody of that song right off the bat. And we just we knew that's what we were going for. And then I think within about 30 minutes, we had the song basically where it was at and uh and uh, we, we turned it in and they wanted um the, the character gunner um who's played by sam palladio to uh to sing the song and so uh, he actually came over to my house and i taught him the piano part he, he lives in nashville now he's a really really cool dude good uh, great musician and um yeah so uh and, and so it was a very it was the last song of the season finale this year What's Nashville like, like actually living there? I, I visited it a couple of times, but I mean, it seems like a close-knit community. Very close-knit, a lot cheaper uh, than many places in the United States. Um, so the cost of living is great, and there's gotten to be a lot of good food and stuff. Um, and it is a very good community. You know, everybody's, you know, a lot of musicians move there. It's sort of a Peter Pan town. Um, and... Uh, so everybody, you know, everybody sort of wants everyone else to do well, and um, it's still a pretty, you know, sincere, genuine Southern town that's also, you know, getting to be pretty big. I, I know a lot of people are moving there. It's sort of, I think it's, it's on the like list of places, uh, like top ten places people are moving. Um, so actually, I should probably just be telling everybody how bad it is. So <laughs> don't have as many people move there. Because, um, you know, we, we haven't even really ever had that bad of traffic, and now we're starting to get it, you know, uh -oh. for the first time. And um, But it's, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a great town. It's got hills. It's got a lot of beautiful things. It's not that far from a lot of other great places like Asheville and Louisville. And very centrally located. And I hear the food scene's really exploded. That's the thing, you know, like, it, it, you know, we joke, like, about 10 years ago. I've been there 15 years, and... You know, 10 years ago, there was like this one place where everybody went um, in, in this one part of town, like all all that we had. And we were driving by there the other day and just sort of laughing at how, like now, you know, it used to be the only place to go. Now there's so much stuff. And, you know, the town is really ripe. Like if you, you know, like take San Francisco, you're from the Bay Area. I mean, I bet I could go there and see like 20 different things to do well there and introduce them to Nashville and they explode. Mm -hmm. um, like you guys have blue bottle uh you know coffee yeah. and we just you know in the past couple of years got a coffee place that does pour overs and sort of has the same vibe um 
And uh, so if I, you know, if I was in, you know, the, the building and real estate and uh, stuff like that, I'd, you know, I'd have some good ideas from that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys got pour overs. Those are just really delicious coffees <laughs> when you do that. It took, you know, it took many years, but it's happening. And now I'm going to play Orphaned, and this has huge drums, and, and you got the, the, the this amazing soaring choir backup vocals going on, and it's great. And and you've got a video for this, right, with the astronaut? Yeah, that that's uh, that was the uh, you know we shot the first video for the record, and um, basically it's just you know I, I walked around town as this character, this astronaut that sort of crash lands into this junkyard in Nashville. And then sort of roamed the earth for a while and, you know, had this like sort of lonely vibe about it. And in the middle of that video shoot, um, the, the, the uh, director of photography just told me to stop and he took a picture. That picture became the album cover. Ah. And this song is, uh, this song's sort of the one that's been, you know, it, it's been a lot of things. Like it was just in a uh, uh, Apple commercial in Japan or something this week that I found out about. I haven't really seen it yet, but... Um, One. And uh, so yeah, because you know that it's got the driving drums and stuff. People are into that. So, and 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 it's sort of a a great concept. And then orphaned, I guess for the for the video, the astronaut is orphaned on planet Earth. Right. And but the, pretty pretty literal. But you can kind of take whatever meaning you and did it inspire? Did you see like an astronaut or something? Is that what inspired the song or just the concept? popped in your head yeah i don't know I, i'm not you know actually here's how it started I, there, I had all these robots and we started trying to make this idea about um like a day in the life of this robot and he he like lived among humans but like totally lived a normal life and like he brushed his teeth and went and, you know had a boring day job at the office and um <laughs> we started shooting and it just it was just terrible i was like it was trying to you know trying to be a little tongue-in-cheek but it was uh it just looked bad and so after like a couple, one of the characters actually was just the guy in the spacesuit at first, and then I was like, man, let's just walk around town in the spacesuit. Then that video sort of came, and um, I'd say the best part about it was walking around downtown Nashville in a spacesuit, and everybody wanted to take pictures with me like I was a street performer or something like that. That could be a thing. Pretty, pretty the, wild. Nashville is starved for astronauts and and other strange characters like New York, your, your Spider Man and Batman and. You know, yeah, it, yeah. I looked like one of those, one of those dudes. <laughs> was there anything in particular that inspired you to write it? Um, I don't know. I guess just maybe an overall worldview of you know. I think you know we're sort of at this epoch in human history where we have so much knowledge and we're so advanced, but at the same time, uh, we're still so you know just primitive in our a lot of our thinking and our tendencies and stuff and. Um, you know, I think there's, you know, there's, you know, we, we sort of come from uh, a way, you know, we're a people that come from, everybody comes from traditions that all have answers. And, you know, we have religion and all these things that sort of say this is the answer to things. I think what we now have is a generation in a world that's a little bit more like, you know, looking for answers rather than having them. And I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling of just... Um, basically you know looking out into the universe and just asking why it's sort of one giant mystery Ooh, that's true that's a good observation let's play the song it's orphaned from ks Rhodes and his album wilderness find out more at ksroads.com on mike's daily podcast
Yeah, K.S. Rhodes. Love his stuff as we go outside of Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast. And the next show, I will have the finale of our interview. We got one more song to hear from him. It's coming up on the next show. And here's today's podcast picture. You can see a picture of K.S. Rhodes right there at mikesdailypodcast.com. It's a cool picture. And ooh, I should give a mention as to where the picture came from. Bob and Kate <laughs> Photography. There you go. So uh, look them up online and give them some money. So there, we've done a nice little transfer of... It's a sharing economy these days. Did you hear about the cars? In fact, my next door neighbor, he... Oh, this is something we were just talking about on the show, about driverless cars, right? Was that the last show? Or No, last show we talked about food. I think maybe four shows ago, we did a news segment where we talked about driverless cars, and I played some car songs, like that Hooters song, Don't Go Drive Tonight, where YouTube told me, no, you can't post a show with that song in the background, so I had to delete the song before I could post the show, stupid YouTube. But anyway, and they're owned by Google, and the driverless cars. And my next-door neighbor, he is working for a company that makes that funny looking I don't know if you've seen a driverless car yet but they got this cool little rotating camera on the top that's always monitoring what's happening around him and he's just got a job working for this company that makes those and I said dude because I'm Californian dude you are in like Flynn because that is the sort of company that's going to get huge huge in the next couple of years but back to our sharing economy and all the sharing stuff and cars. A story just came out about how Ford, they're releasing cars in England that you can buy the car and if you haven't paid it off, when you're not using it, you go through this other service that rents out your car while you're not using it and that helps to pay off your payments. Isn't that interesting? I talk about these kind of things on my Wolverine radio show that I do weekday mornings. From 6 to 10 Eastern Time. So listen to that. If you're on the West Coast, that's uh, 3 to 7 in the morning. And you're probably getting up around 6. You can hear the last hour of the show. It's wonderful. So check that all out at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mark, you sure just said a whole bunch just now. I did. Mark, I've been thinking about it. You know what? And I would not like it if I was restricted from getting married to my wife. Benita the Rodeo Queen Cause I love Her And I love Him That's so beautiful you two Yeah that would be wrong So yeah why can't gays be married You know As in Floyd the Floor Man and John Deere the Engineer What they're gay It might have slipped your Observations but yes uh, so there we go. I want to try and make it out to the Pride Parade in San Francisco, but I got to get to work tonight at 6, so I don't know if I'm going to make it. Dang it. I wanted to go this year. It's going to be a definite year to go. I might pop over to San Francisco for about an hour and then head back. If I do, I will try and get some audio and do a mic on mobile and post it on the next show. We'll see. But definitely on the next show, KS Rhodes. And another great song from him, and we'll talk to him some more. Plus, we will hear from Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.